And we're back with the first live picks of 2022. Today we have fresh box office numbers for Singapore and a newly opened European and Asian fusion restaurant. But first, the hits and misses of 2021 with a journalist, Jan Lee. Jan, as you know, because of the pandemic, cinemas here have suffered under various restrictions. Was that reflected in the box office numbers? Yes, to a certain extent. Uh, I mean, you know, 2021, uh, December 2021 was the best the box office has done in two years in Singapore because of Spider-Man No Way Home, which is a huge hit. I think as of now, uh, the latest numbers are already over 12 million in Singapore. Um, for comparison, Avengers Endgame was the biggest movie ever in Singapore and that made about 19 million. So No Way Home is doing very, very, very well. I think as of our count in the story that I wrote, it was at 8.72 million as of December 26. So by that time, it only opened for like 10 days. So clearly there was huge surge in, you know, cinema going and interest because of Spider-Man and hopefully that momentum will carry us through. But as for the other titles, the numbers are not so great, especially compared with like pre-pandemic numbers. So uh, things like the UIP distributed No Time to Die, Fast and Furious 9, uh, were, did not perform up to expectations according to uh, the UIP spokesperson I, I spoke to. Fast and Furious 9, for example, normally would have grossed over 7 million at least. James Bond apparently usually does above uh, 6 million. Uh, so this is also be below, you know, um, expectations. And I think it also had a lot to do with when a movie opened. So, you know, comparatively December, when Spider-Man opened, it was a, a much more, um, I would say the rules were a, more, a lot more relaxed because we went through two phases of uh, phase two heightened alert in 2021. And during those times, um, dining in was banned. So you couldn't have like popcorn or concessions uh, while watching a movie. And that definitely hurt some of the titles. There was also a 50 packs per hall uh, capacity limit without pre-event testing uh, during some of those periods. So those movies would have been affected as well. So F9 actually did quite well given that it, it actually was, was screened during that uh, period of 50 packs per hall, if I'm not wrong. So those, uh, you know, titles did well considering the pandemic but nothing is back to pre-pandemic pre numbers aside from you know a big title like spider-man or a very very big title like shang chi so clearly the superheroes are still out there winning um also if you were a smaller film asian films uh, or like a smaller mid-range hollywood title because of the um safe distancing measures that restricted uh uh seating right the amount of seating you can have in a cinema uh the screens just have to be given to the movies that are doing better so smaller movies that usually might have a longer time or maybe might be allocated one or two screens while something like spider-man is screening might lose out on those screens because of the seating um, limitations so cinemas will have to give priority to films that are doing better so you know the the Asian film list was a bit this small, I think, uh, in 2021. Really good points there, Jen. So, a quick one before I let you go. What was your favourite movie of 2021? You mentioned, you know, a lot of Hollywood blockbusters, but, you know, does yours fall in, uh, under that category or is it something totally different and why? Personally, I think one that I really felt like it gave me the experience of like, wow, it's really special being in a movie theatre and it makes such a difference watching it on the big screen. Uh, for me, that was Dune, um, which was the Warner Brothers title. Um, the, the It's sort of like Game of Thrones in space. So it's very uh, beautifully shot. And um, I thought the sets and the go costumes were all gorgeous on the big screen. And I think it really gave me the experience of like, see, I really missed um, movie theatres, you know, um, it's not easy for the cinemas to survive during the pandemic. So if you do love uh, cinema going, if you're somebody who's very invested in uh, watching movies and you love films and you want to watch them on the big screen, do try and head out to cinemas to catch films and do try and um, buy popcorn and buy drinks because cinemas make um, most of their money from concession sales. 
Thanks so much, Jan. See you next time. We want to know what's your favorite movie for 2021. Do tell us in the comments below. Next up, something to excite your taste buds. Senior food correspondent Wong Ah Yok is here to tell us all about Eclipse. Now, it's a brand new European and Asian fusion restaurant located at the top of the Yu Hua building in Yu Tong Sen Street. So, Ah Yok, tell us all about Eclipse. What did you like or not like about it? Okay, Eclipse, yeah, like you said just now, is, is at the top of the Yu Hua building yeah, in Newton Sen Street. Yu Hua building is really a very iconic building. If you are like driving along Newton Sen Street or Cross Street, you will not miss it. It's a very, very old building. Uh, it's 95 years old, actually. And it used to be a hotel called Great Southern Hotel. But now everybody knows it as the Yuhua Department Store. But very few people know that at the rooftop, there's a new restaurant that just opened called Eclipse. And it's a beautiful restaurant. It's, it's actually a very ideal spot for a restaurant because you get a wonderful view of Chinatown from the rooftop. And Eclipse, they've designed it really beautifully. It's a bit... Uh, old glamour but the modern touches as well which goes very well with the theme of the building and the entrance is quite interesting because you actually have to walk into Yu Hua department store on the ground floor then you take the lift up to the sixth floor and when the lift door opens yeah you walk into a different world totally so what i love about the restaurant is really the ambience this is really special to me it's like something i've not seen very often in singapore this old glamour modern combination which works very well uh, in this iconic building the menu uh, is fusion is uh, western with some i would say some singapore touches because they do things like pumpkin laksa soup and chicken breast and green curry sauce so it's this kind of uh, fusion food which might be very interesting to someone uh, young who's not exposed to such food and find it a bit novel but for me i think it can be a bit more interesting uh, I think maybe we can do something like Western meets Shanghai to go with that that long history, you know, from the 1920s, 1930s. You would think of like a grand Shanghai or glamour, that kind of thing. So it might work better actually than to do things like uh, Western Singaporean. Uh, but yeah, that's just my idea. Well, thanks so much, Ayok. Wong Ayok, the senior food correspondent. If you're looking for more ideas for eating out, how about a seven-course menu at a new Japanese restaurant that Ayok has also reviewed? Check it out in foodpics at str.sg forward slash life.